Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. It's been a very long time since I did a working Wednesday, but by popular request, it is back. And if you are new to my page, welcome. So today I am going to talk about different opportunities that you can go after in the healthcare industry that will pay you the same amount of money as a nurse or more. And in addition to some of these positions that I'm going to post in this video today, there are a couple of coding positions that I'm going to post that do not require for you to currently hold a coding certification. That is a hot topic. A lot of times people go to school, they graduate, and they don't go like directly out to get their coding um, certification. They wait a little bit or they go take the coding exam and they fail and they wanna go back and take it again. But while you are working on that, you can still actively work on applying for positions that don't require for you to have the coding certification, but just requires for you to have the education and maybe sometimes a little bit of experience. So stick around. <music> All right, so this position that I have up on my screen right now, this is a registered nurse position in Colorado Springs. This is not for um, any of us HIM professionals to apply for it unless you are in fact a nurse. But I do have this up on my screen just to show you an example of what a nurse would make in this particular area. My disclaimer, you know, nurses get paid different rates in different states. But um, Colorado Springs, the minimum pay rate for this particular position is $30 an hour with the max being $44 per hour for a nursing position. This is a nurse, right? So the next positions that I'm getting ready to show you, the next three positions are some positions that pay top dollar and they are in various different states. And then the last two positions that I'm gonna show you are coding positions that don't require for you to be currently certified to qualify for the position. So let's click over here to the first one. Now, I have to say this before I go into it because I usually type it down below inside of the text and I still get people that will email me and say, hey, can I send you my resume um, to apply for this position? I am not the recruiter for any of these positions. I am not affiliated with any of these companies. I do not have direct contact with any of the recruiters for these positions. So you will not be able to send me your resume to apply for these positions. If you are interested in applying for any of these positions, the link to apply for them will be down below in the in the, the text section. You can click the link and you will have to apply with the companies directly. What I will say is that before you apply to any of these positions, one, make sure that you are actually targeting your resume to the position so that you can make it through the ATS system, right? Make sure that you are using the right keywords in your resume to make it through the system. And then second, make sure that your resume is written in a value-based way so that you can actually attract the recruiter to actually want to call you in for the, the interview, the recruiter or the hiring manager. So make sure that you do those two things before you apply for the position. Okay, that's my spill. I had to get that out. Okay, and another disclaimer also is that make sure you also do your own due diligence and that you make sure that you, you know, verify the position, the company, X, Y, and Z, all that good stuff before you apply to any of these positions. So this position here is an HIM senior associate position. It is a virtual position, so it is remote. And uh, to me, um, it seems like this position is pretty much like an, an education type position. So you'll be educating the staff or the providers in this department. Uh, let's do a control F so that I can show you exactly what I mean. So right here it says experience educating others on coding and documentation preferred. So this is not an entry level position. They are asking for you to have anywhere between three to five years of experience and to at least have a RHIT or RHIA. But I also do want to point out that in this position, they say preferred, right? I like to you know, do a control F on my keyboard whenever I see job postings to see if it is required or preferred. Because if it is preferred, that simply means that this is something that we would like for you to have. It is a bonus if you have this. But if you do not have this, it's okay. You can still apply for this position. We may still consider you 
for this position based off of other transferable skills or experience that you may have, right? So here it says relevant degree in health information management preferred. Here it says educating others on coding and documentation preferred. RHIA and RHIT preferred and knowledge of CMS performance metrics preferred, right? So there's a chance. Now, what I want you to look at is this pay rate here. The minimum salary amount is $88,000 for this position with a max salary amount of $132,000 a year annually. So as you can see, this is significantly higher than the code, excuse me, than the registered nurse position in Colorado. And just to put it out there, Colorado is not a state where the cost of living is, is low, right? I purposely picked a nursing position in a state where the cost of living is higher so that I can kind of get you know, a, a good range of what a nurse would make. And then it also depends on the, the specialty that the nurse is in as well. That can also change the amount of, um, the amount of pay that a nurse will receive. Same thing as HIM professionals. That is a factor as well. And that is something that I talked about inside of my emails that I sent out earlier today. So if you are inside of my, my email list or inside of my private Facebook group, you will see where I talked about the specialty that you decide to pursue in your career matters because one could be more lucrative than the other, right? Working in radiation oncology versus a, pedi a pediatric office or a primary care physician office is very different because a radiation oncology practice is a high cost center. So it's significantly different. So I did want to um, put that out there and just show you that like this is significantly different. Being paid almost up to $132,000 a year annually is about $63 an hour. So here is one position. And like I said, the link will be down below to apply if you're interested. Here is another position. This is a emergency room coder. This is also a remote position. And again, the salary range is here. On the low end, it's about $4,900 a month. And then on the high end, it is $7,000 a month. And that equates up to about $91,000 a year. So this is putting you in the same range or even more than what a registered nurse is making. And, you know, this is not a lead or a senior position. The position I just was showing you guys on this page here, this is a senior position here. It's a senior position. This position is not. <laughs> this is not a senior position. It is a remote position. And so you could be in any state unless this company has a residency requirement, then that would change that. Sometimes companies have a residency requirement and require for you to live in the same state as the company. And usually if that is the case, it would be inside of the job posting as well. So again, make sure you do your own due diligence and make sure that you verify if there is a residency requirement for this company or not. But, you know, just to show you what an emergency room coder in Washington is making, this is going to give you a, you know, a, a good ballpark. And there's a few other things to um, take into account um, when you are looking at companies and deciding whether or not it's a company that's going to pay you top dollar or not. But let's scroll down here to what some of the requirements are here. They're asking for you to have a high school diploma or equivalent, three years of coding experience or equivalent, and then one of the coding certifications from either AHIMA or AAPC. Now, when you are reading job descriptions, you guys, I really want you to pay attention to what is being said, right? So here where it says three years of coding experience or equivalent education or experience, sometimes people see this first line here, that three years of coding experience, and then they automatically stop and say, I don't have the three years of experience, I can't apply for that. But you fail to go further down into the sentence where it says equivalent education or experience. So you still have to take into account what you have learned and if you have any work experience. And this can be indirect work experience, right? Maybe you're transitioning from being a patient service representative, you went to school, you got your coding certification, and now you're ready to transition over to being a medical coder, but you've worked as a patient service representative already for maybe three, four, five years. There are still some transferable skills that you have that can transition over into being a medical coder. So I don't want you to disqualify yourself before you apply to any of these positions. Make sure that you are really reading through the job descriptions for thorough 
understanding before you do something like disqualify yourself from applying for the position, okay? So this is another position here, emergency room coder. The next position here is the coding and reimbursement specialist. This is a senior position. This position here is in Virginia and the pay rate on the minimum is $30 an hour and at the max it is $48 an hour and that takes you up to six figures, you guys. If you're in this position and you you know, we're all for top tier or at the top, you know, and sometimes, you know, they may not do that because if they give you top dollar, that doesn't uh, give you any room to receive the salary increases when you're inside of the position. So usually if you're inside of a position and then once you reach the cap for that position, um, the pay increases stop <laughs> unless you are promoted into a different position. I'll put it like that. It may not be the same across the board, but usually that's what happens. But nonetheless, if you were to get inside of this position, you know that there is the potential to make it all the way up to $48.21 per hour, which is a little over $100,000 a year as a coding and reimbursement specialist. And again, this is a position in a state where you would be pay getting paid the same thing as a nurse or even more money than what a nurse is making. The education requirement is a high school graduate or equivalent, five years of relevant experience. And then again, they are asking for you to have one of the coding certifications from either AHIMA or AAPC. So these are some really good positions. These are just a few examples of a whole bunch, okay? There's a whole lot of different opportunities. A lot of times people ask me, is it worth it to pursue a career in health information management or health information technology? And I tell people all the time, yes, it is. I was able to go very far in my career with the RHIT credential and having an associate's degree in health information technology. It is one of the degrees and certifications I would say that allows you to create a very lucrative career for yourself without having to spend a whole lot of time in school unless you want to. You really can create your career the way that you want it to be. If you want to get the bachelor's degree, if you want to get the master's degree, absolutely go do it. It definitely can make you more marketable. It definitely can make you more money. It can. But you can also make the same or if not more with just having a coded certification and an associate's degree as well. So I wanted to show you guys these three. And then the next two are coding positions that um, that looks like they give you some time to get the coding certification if you do not currently have it. So this here is a coder one position at Lafayette Regional, Regional Health Center. All right, and so let's scroll right down to the good stuff. <laughs> Let's scroll down right here to where it says, if no graduate degree in HIM or HIT or CCS must obtain CCS certification within 12 months of employment, right? So essentially this means that you have the degree or you're in pursuit of receiving your degree, but if you are hired into this position, if you happen to take one of their coding exams, because a lot of times positions like this still have that pre-coding assessment that you must pass, right? You're not just going to get placed inside of this position. But if you so have to know coding, you know, you know coding some way, somehow, or you've already uh, finished school and you did really good in school, you know your stuff and you take the coding exam, uh, the pre-assessment here at the job and you pass it and you get hired, you must obtain the coding certification within 12 months of employment, okay? So this is an example of that, which is which HCA, okay? And nine times out of 10, if they have one position like this, then I would most definitely put ACA Healthcare down as one of the companies that hire coders without coding certifications. If you have my job search strategy masterclass, you know I have a complete list of companies that hire coders without coding certifications. There's at least 30 that I know of personally that do not require for you to currently have your coding certification. This next position here is a certified coder, uh, excuse me, certified outpatient coder position and the same thing. And they have the pay rate here, 2093 per hour. This is a great one if you're trying to get your foot in the door. And again, it's requesting for you to at least have an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree in a health information technology program or a health information administration program. And then 
Also, it says certification in one of the following within 12 months of hire. So this one is very similar to the other position. It is giving you the opportunity to get your foot in the door, right? While you are in pursuit of obtaining that coding certifications. There are a lot of companies out here that is willing to give you that chance. There, there are a lot, of, this is kind of like a revolving door and in a good way. And I want to put it in a way of coder ones or entry level coders are not going to always be entry level coders. They're not going to always be at that point. They are going to grow and excel in their career. And as they leave these positions, right, that's going to open opportunities for new coders to come in. And so because of that, these opportunities are always going to be around. They are out there. So don't, don't lose hope. Don't give up. But remember what I said at the very beginning on this position here, right? Remember what I said at the very beginning, before you apply to any of these positions, make sure that you are actually targeting your resume for the position with the keywords so that you can make it through the ATF system. And then make sure that you are writing your resume in a value-based way so that when your resume makes it through the ATF system and the recruiter or the hiring manager is reading your resume, they actually have an interest in you to the point that they reach out to you and request an interview. Okay. Listen, this is the exact reason why I love working in the healthcare industry, I swear. When I first got into the healthcare industry, I said, you know, I want to work in the healthcare industry, but I don't want to do anything hands-on. I don't, I don't want to do anything hands-on patient care, but at the same time, I want to make a lot of money. And this is one of the industries where you can do that. So I wish everyone good luck if you apply to any of the positions. They're going to be down below in the text description, the link to apply for these positions. And if there are some other things you want me to talk about on this channel, go ahead and let me know in the comments and do me a favor and drop some money bags in the comments if this is going to be your last year of being overworked and underpaid. Until next time, friends. Bye.